please. Here. Present. Here. Here. Thank you. Item 2A on the agenda is the approval uh, or amendments to the agenda. Looking at the agenda, does the committee have any amendments to make? Alderman? Mr. Chairman, we were at a previous meeting going to speak about Strasser Road again. Uh, I noticed it wasn't on there, but I didn't know if you had considered that topic. What, what uh, specifically was what topic was compared to Strasser? Was that we were talking, we we're going to talk about the crosswalk and or potential for those the lights, the uh, signage, just as we did for McKnight. So that's in the 2020 proposed budget. Okay. To do so, it. To do, because I think the discussion was we know we don't have funds to do it this year. So that was something that was communicated, I thought, to me, that okay. communicated to Dan. And I also heard from Alderman Buckman and the mayor that we should look to fund additional, um, you know, crosswalk safety, you know, the safety component for that. So that is something we're working on for the 2020 budget. It was my recollection that we decided either that it didn't require full board approval of it or that we were simply going to do this as an experiment to use some other enhanced lighting, a bar. Greater than what's at McKnight. Or a different, a different system and then compare yeah. and then see what's what. I just thought we were going to talk about it. I just, I Did you? Know. Okay. I, uh, we can, I, I'll tell you what, I can, I, with that suggestion, I can put it on the October meeting and ask that we get um, public word, um, that we could have a conversation about that. And can I ask for one more item? Sure. Uh, this item actually came through the Public Works Committee, but it's also a public safety item. This is the Memorial Park Playground Safety Fence. Okay, I mean, I can add that as well. Are you talking about a, uh, uh, the, the playground that you can see from Strasser? Mm -hmm. Okay. Children's playground, a toddler playground. And, and the, the goal is to discuss whether or not we should have a some sort of a fence around that area? Okay. Okay. I can certainly add that to October as well. Is that okay? Sounds good. All right. We'll add them both. Thank you. Any other uh, changes or amendments proposed to the agenda? Hearing none, the agenda will stand as approved. Uh, we have no announcements. Do we have any citizen comments? Is there anybody in the audience who wishes to make a comment with regard to anything having to do with the Public Safety Committee? Please come on up to the microphone and identify yourself, and I'll give you at least three minutes to state your case. Although I don't know, maybe maybe two and a half. Please, for posterity, right? Right. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let's move on. There's no uh, city administrator report. We could have a report of the ch committee chairs and aldermen. I, the chairman, I have no report. Uh, alderman Kramer? No report. Thank you. Alderman Wachmuller? I'd just like to thank the chief for helping us get that paddy wagon and be sure to pass it along to everybody involved. We really enjoyed it. Andy, more than me, probably. <laughs> I, I have a qu I do have a question about that. You're out on parole already? Or yeah. Is that yeah. Said, my wife bailed me out. His own recognizance, or is he? Yeah. Focus you on the wrap, not the ride. <laughs> right. <exactly. laughs> got this little ankle, ankle accessory. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. Um, all hey, the Thank you. Department of reports. Police report uh, first. We'll go with the monthly reports we have under new business. The two items. But okay. Under the uh, police department's monthly report, there's a couple of things we want to talk about. The traffic detail on McKnight Boulevard continues. Uh, as you look at the traffic studies that Dan's given us, uh, the weekends are, are the area are the times really where you see the most speeding. So we've uh, Major Hawkins now that she's back in the FBI Academy, and before Sergeant Simpson have set up a detail where the officers are up there on Saturdays and Sundays every weekend running radar and, and doing their thing. So. They also monitor during the week for the uh, truck traffic that we get the complaints on. Uh, we have a retail detail, uh, sorry for the rhyming, but retail detail is going to consist of four Brentwood officers. Uh, Sergeant uh, Chris Gibson is going to be in charge of the detail. The goal of the detail is to assign these officers, one on each platoon, to our retail areas to create a, a strong liaison with the, the businesses. Uh, hopefully get some best practice for reducing theft in terms of using technology and things like that. Chris has got him going to training. Uh, these four officers are going to go to training. Chesterfield Police is one of the places that they've gone to. Chesterfield's got a very strong retail police uh, presence. So that's going to kick off. Hopefully, uh, Andy, when will we call on Thanksgiving? That'll be Thanksgiving. So the week before Thanksgiving, that'll go into place. We also have, as part of that, there's going to be an overtime detail through the holidays in our retail areas as well. Um, just a quick update on our, our body-worn cameras. Before I came here 18 months ago, the city got involved in a, a grant process with other cities. We have had at least four of them that have dropped out since. This has been, quite frankly, it's just been a mess. Uh, the dilemma is we've gone through the testing process. Um, Angie coordinated it, uh, picked out Panasonic cameras. That's been, I, I think, pretty uh, universal among the departments that are still in it. The dilemma is uh, Regis cannot figure out how to transport the data for the downloads to Regis. Uh, and really, it's an internet connection issue. It's a, a bandwidth issue. I don't know that they're going to fix it, frankly. And, and the alternative would be for us to be provided a server and download our own data in-house at the police station here, and all the departments would do that. Um, that's not the direction that Regis wants to go. It's not, I mean, they are a for-profit group. They're looking at the recurring revenue here is, I think, the, the uh, stumbling block that's going on. I don't know what the end game is, frankly. Um, so I, our IT uh, department is, is heavily involved in it, trying to figure out a way to get the information pumped back to Regis. Uh, we had a meeting with them this week, and uh, they're pretty frustrated as well. So I, I don't know when they're coming. I don't know if they're coming. Um, so we're kind of in a waiting game for that. Um, we had a couple incidents in the reporting period here. We had a mobile on the run robbery a couple weeks ago that I think you probably all saw. Uh, it was uh, three black males pulled up in front of the mobile. One got out, robbed the store. Uh, he immediately, they, one of the things they took were lottery tickets, and he immediately went down into North St. Louis to a store and cashed them in. So you can do the, <laughs> you can do the sleuth work from there for how they were caught. So they, the warrants were issued for them for several robberies, actually. We were not the only robbery that evening. Uh, we had a McDonald's assault that was uh, on this reporting period. Uh, our detectives did a really nice job on that. They were able to get interviews from both suspects. One for sure, I mean, a taped confession. I'm not sure about the second guy. But warrants were issued on both of them with $100,000 bonds. Interestingly enough, on that bond, the St. Louis County judge also said you can't ride to Metrolink anymore. Wish we could put that on a few people more than these two guys. but. Uh, he banned them from ever riding Metro. Is that enforceable? I mean, how, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. He's a judge. I guess he can do that. I mean, to stay I away. I just meant like, yeah. They have to be police officers. <laughs> yes. 
like yeah, like but, academically or actually? I mean, actually, right. I mean, <laughs> like, I, I think he has the power like, to do it. I just, yeah, I, like, I don't question he has the power to do it. I just wondered, <laughs> how the hell do you do that? How do you, how do you make somebody? No, no, you can't go there. I mean, well, without like, fitting with some sort of order, order, I mean, without like fitting with some yeah. sort of wristlet or anklet or something that goes on. Well, the problem that they have is that the officers of Rapid Metro Link have provided their photos and oh. they knew them already, so oh, there you they're, okay. you know. This would, if we could get to the point where we could exclude people from riding the Metrolink because of repeated criminal events, I mean, the only crime, uh, frankly, the most crime, and almost all of our crime is retail related, and a lot of it's Metrolink riders, and if we had that power to exclude them, that would be huge. And we're working on trying to do that, but as yet we haven't reached that ability. Uh, your camera update real quick. The uh, company that was hired just called us again today. They're having problems with the installation of the cameras in terms of the, the pitch black issues in York Village at night. So they're having a hard time picking up the cars that are supposed to be transported by email to us late at night. And Alderman Cluffield, you're aware of the Is it process. time to reconsider that proposal on <clears throat> well, additional lights? Well, well, I will just say that the of the 34 that were approved, one was approved a block from that corner. I mean, one was approved at the corner of Middlesex and York, mm -hmm. which is simply a block from where that turret is. But I mean, other lights. Oh, I don't know. The, no. I don't know. Two quick East National Night Outs uh, next week, October 1st. Um, it's been kind of a slow process of getting block parties. I don't know if it's the late part of the year problem or a Tuesday problem, I don't know. But right now we only have four blocks that are signed up. Uh, we have another coffee with a cop on October 2nd at the McDonald's at 8 a.m. The last thing I was going to mention in the, in the report from the PD is this ongoing issue we're dealing with on Barnstable Court with Elizabeth Harris. We talked about it today in the staff meeting. Um, our officers, are quite frankly, I don't know what else we can do. We've gotten a 72-hour hold on this woman, mandatory, so we physically took her to the hospital for psych review. Uh, she's been introduced to two separate health care providers that have provided counseling for her, one of whom has since fired her because she threatened them. Um, we had, we, we're doing ongoing calls for service over there, and we're putting a packet together for the judge. We've taken the neighbors to get orders of protection against her. Uh, she's been issued at least two, maybe three criminal summonses for disturbance calls that are coming to criminal court. Um, Here's the, the very, very long story short. This isn't going away, and we've run out of options of how to deal with this. Now we've got six neighbors that are calling me today, as a matter of fact, saying, well, it looks like the police are just kid-gloving her. And, you know, and they don't understand there's, there's really not much else we can do. Right. Actually, about two, three, four years ago, I don't remember exactly the timeline, we had a similar incident with another resident know that I necessarily should be talking about this in open session um, that was demonstrating behavior that neighbors thought were um, exactly so the city asked um, I think with the assistance of the city attorney that he vacate his premises yeah. and he had to move out of town so I see that Lisa has sent an email to um, the city's um, zoning council to give us advice We've done it before, so I think we might be able to. Yeah, I looked into that it, case. But it's a little different. That was a little different. He was wanted, that well, guy, wanted. three years okay. ago, and they actually cut a deal in court where he basically okay. will expunge everything. He, he'd leave, get out of get town. Out. <laughs> <laughs> but this he is was a different the space. He, from and the that stairs, was the other piece. So he was, was renting, different. and she's an owner and been in Brentwood yeah. for years. So anyway, it's. So is there no? Is the family not helping at all? She had, really there's, hasn't. There's no family in the immediate area. They're out of town. Is it the public administrator do some kind of competency evaluation? That too, if we could do. We're, we're working with Lisa. She's going to the attorney. We're, we're looking. You know, it's getting ideas. We're open to suggestions on that one because we're running out of ideas. Is that anything else? No, sir. I, I've got a couple of questions and I'll open it up to the rest of the uh, group. Uh, so first of all, I wanted to make a comment. Um, the McKnight Road work, um, if anecdotal examples are of any value to you, and I know, you know, on the positive and on the negative, they're always, you know, uh, not that, um, not necessarily that reliable, but people have come up to me, made a point to come up to me and tell me how much they appreciate the fact that they see 
less speeding. They also see less of the the giant, you know, the uh, tractor trailers and, yeah. and that kind of thing on the street. So I just wanted to tell you from my experience, and over the last 30 days or so, I've had people go out of their way to talk to me by email and in person to say um, good to hear. That, that was true. Part of that's the answer. Uh, yeah. Shower's done a good job with signage up there as well. Yeah. We, our guys are there. We appreciate the comment, but Dan's done a good job with this. With regard to the retail detail, um, is is there any eye in, in this effort toward um, encouraging retail stores to take on some of the cost of policing, or is that kind of a dead issue? It's never dead. Um, we wanted to. I would like to see the officers get in there and get an established relationship with the bosses of these deer birds, Target. You know all the frequent flyers up there, so. Um, Nordstrom Rack is getting, they're getting pounded. <laughs> I mean, there's people just walking in Nordstrom Rack and they've got uniformed security guards there. So they're spending money already. So, um, you know, yeah, we would like to, but Bola and I tried this when I got here 18 months ago. We had to actually, and they were ice cold to the idea. So we'll, but we'll keep plugging on it. Okay. Uh, the other question I had had to do with the Panasonic, the cameras. Um, the IT issue, is it that Regis is resisting the notion of us taking on that that uh, that server storage on our own, but at the same time, they're not investing in the broadband with to do it they, themselves. They want us to invest in the broadband by but, city, but then give it to them to in order to, to have the flow of information to them, and it's expensive. It's about five hundred dollars a month for the city to right. get the, the pipe open up to the point where this information can flow well off to Regis. Okay, so it, it's. I think what complicates this even further was that Regis was party to the grant submission. They were directing it. Okay, well. <laughs> yeah, they were right. party. They, yeah. they brought the bus. Okay. Yeah, that's right. They bought the, they bought the drinks. Right. Um, so, okay. And then the last thing I was going to tell you is uh, we have a fifth uh, national night out uh, black party. Uh, Hart Nelson and I are going to um, post one in the Sussex block between York and North Coast. We shall see. So, any other questions? Anybody on the committee? Let's see. Chief, what are the other locations for National Night Out? Uh, you want to pop around? You know, I, I don't have them with me. Uh, I'll, I'll email, email them to you. Yeah. Uh, I know one's Golf Mall. If Janet you know. was putting that list together today. Okay. So, there were like two or three places that were trying to decide if they were going to do it. She was waiting to send out the list, okay. but we'll make sure you get a copy. And I'll, I'll, I'll communicate with them. We just I just got a text message from him literally about 20 minutes ago, so we're okay. good to go, but we'll get it cool. applied for and everything. Thanks. Chief, is the county up with their body cameras? No, they have not purchased theirs yet. They're not up and running. Are there any other municipalities? I mean, are the ones that are doing it, how are they doing it? How, how is it happening? They're, they're hosting at home. They're in-house hosting, mostly. But they don't have Regis. No, the Regis, there were, uh, Bola, if you can help me with this, I think there were 11 cities or yeah, recently, is that correct? That were part of that grant submission. Mm -hmm. And we're so down to, I think, seven now. A couple of them dropped off? Oh, yeah, at least at least three. There might be four that dropped. <clears throat> All over these same issues. If we were to get them up, would that be an asset for us? Is that, I mean? I think at this point, law enforcement, they are definitely an asset, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I could use some education from you and or the chief from Brentwood Forest perspective on the cameras. Have, where have, have they been decided just one location and where is it sending the signal to? Is it taped around the clock or? The station eye camera? Yeah. You're talking about yours? Is it just one camera? No, no. Which camera are you talking about? The, talking about the, the, I, don't know, I don't know. Body no, cameras. Existed. No, 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 no. He shifted gears from body cameras Sorry. to uh, so stationary York, cameras for York, right? uh, yeah, license readers. So these are these are cameras being purchased by the residents in York. They're going to be bought by Brentwood. Uh, but the goal here was to work kind of a, a partner in a partnership with us. And the goal is to they will take 24 hours a day at the first entrance going down McKnight South into the area of McKnight of York Village. Our goal was to be able to all, most of the crime that we have in York Village is after one in the morning, right? So what we wanted was the availability of the camera to be able to tell the on-duty officers that a car came through the camera, say at 3.30 in the morning. There just isn't that many folks coming into York Village at 3 o'clock in the morning. So it gives us an opportunity. It's an email, direct email into the supervisor's phone, 
and they will get a video off the camera of the car going through. Cool. And we're having problems getting capturing the license plate, but that should have been that should be a piece of the of the puzzle. Okay. Once that video hits the sergeant's phone within a couple seconds, the sergeant supervisor can get on the air and say, "Hey, we had a car go into the to the area. It's a blue old whatever the car is." And just it gives us at least a heads up to go into the area and look for that car because it's an anomaly for, for people to go in there that late at night. Where is that? Is it, is it being recorded? It's, uh, I mean, where's it located? I, the, yeah. the, the stone turret that's right at McKnight in the first entrance, it's on the, it's on the York side of it, kind of hidden about maybe 15, 20 feet off the ground. The signal's being pumped back to the resident's house where they're downloading the video there. So yes, it is stored, yes. Well, Brentwood Forest is still discussing the topic. They've got many more entrances than York right. has. So I'm not quite sure if we could use the same strategy, but. It's a different neighborhood too. You know, yeah. you got, you got a younger, it's kind of, you, you, look, you know what the demographics are. Sure. There. You got between a younger crowd that may five. come home three and four. Yeah, between you know, three and five, home. maybe. Yeah. yeah, three and five, maybe. But you do have the coverage of so many different exits and entrances into the facility well, is it too. expensive? It's, um, the camera wasn't very expensive, and I don't know that the downloading is all that expensive no. either. I don't know the exact total, but um, I could probably put you in a ballpark. I don't think it was more than $2,500. Okay, that's right. And, and um, is this something, the lighting issue, is this something that the trustees could um, add lights to the turret area? That's what they're doing now. Are they? Okay. Yeah. The, the security company they hired is, they're, they're trying to figure it out. They okay, good. White got there. Since we've had the trailer, though, have our calls gone down for that? Okay. Yeah. Type of activity. Yeah, and I, I'm not attributing it to the trailer because we might get hit hard all next month, and then, you know, I, I'd like to say what, what we do makes a difference. Exactly. Um, but I will tell you that we are an island in a sea of problems. Uh, Richmond Heights got hit with 12 car bodies a couple nights ago. Out of Clayton, Richmond Heights, Maplewood, and, and really Ladue have really been hit much more than we have um, but it doesn't mean they're not here it just means that I, I don't know what's causing it we're fortunate I would tell you that for sure 100% in my opinion that our, our patrols have made a difference okay that piece of it I think I can confidently tell you it makes a difference and signage I, I think it does it absolutely yeah. does okay. they're, you know, they're putting out the decoy car in the trailer every night and it, it does I, I hope it's making a difference, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you, Chief. Um, I, I will try and be brief. Um, any questions on the call report before I dive in a little further down? Today, um, all the documentation and construction bid documents went out for the ADA project at the firehouse. Um, all that's been ironed out. Schedule at the firehouse for any uh, prospective contractors doing a pre bid meeting, and then the bids will be opened. I don't believe the date on this report is accurate, I think it's the 15th. So, the, the next, the October uh, public safety meeting will bring the, the bids to this committee. So, it'll be by the 23rd, you'll have it? Yes. Okay. Well, and they will be reviewed um, by Horner and Schiffrin at that point. So, we should be able to bring, bring a recommendation. Um, we have a new employee starting work tomorrow. Um, replace one of our gentlemen that uh, retired, so we're, we're really excited to get him on board. Um, his information was listed um, in, in this document as well, so he's coming from the St. Louis Fire Department, and um, he's, he's really excited to be on board with us. Um, the, we still have a, another gentleman that's going through the disability process, so hopefully that's coming to an end in the very near future. Hopefully we'll proceed with hiring another new employee at that time. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, does anybody have any questions? Nope. Thank, Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Uh, the next item is approval of the minutes from uh, July 24th. Anybody had a chance to review the minutes? Any changes, redactions? Hearing none, they will stand as approved. 
have the McKnight Road traffic study update, and I think this is a topic to discuss um, uh, next meeting, I guess. Or are next. you, are no. you, are you so giving the, us an update? The okay. dates that have been um, divided are either the 4th of October, the 10th of October, or the 11th. So this is Friday, Thursday, Friday. And um, I know that there's a public works committee meeting that starts at 6. So I was just in the process of sending Ann um, Amitola, the Public Works Director of the City of Lejeune, um, a question whether it, they would be agreeable, as we, to actually meeting on that Thursday. The 10th? 10th, starting at about 4.30, and then meeting running till 6.30 or 7. Um, and then also asking her what would be or where would be an ideal meeting location, and then Tillis Park, or it could be over at the community center, or it could be at their city hall, a uh, mutually agreed upon location. Um, so that way, for those that are on the Public Works Committee, it gives them a chance to maybe show up early, hear the presentation, um, and then be able to attend their meeting as well. And maybe we can even schedule it where there are two presentations. So. That's so this is this is presenting the, the report. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Do so you have any questions about that? Yes. Um, the one comment I will, if I could make, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, is that when we were at the um, infamous structure near the lake, um, the what's it, pavilion, pavilion? Um, I heard I heard more complaints about that being at the pavilion. Being the venue. Example where they could all be able to hear better. Mm -hmm. There's a hearing issue, and people are talking over each other, and a lack of structure. I guess uh, if that's possible. And we had one person complain about okay. accessibility too. Yeah, that's the first thing that came to my mind. Yeah. Okay. Although I think it's accessible, I think it was just concerned about the, you know, the the grading going up to the pavilion mm -hmm. is pretty steep, and mm -hmm. a couple of folks in wheelchairs had interest mm -hmm. in wanting to be. So maybe not that location. Maybe not. Okay. And spider. <laughs> spiders. Descending spiders. <laughs> Very good. Breaker. Yeah, that's right. Yes. We're going to miss the whole, you know, <laughs> spiders, <laughs> spiders deployed on McKnight Road <laughs> to discourage traffic <laughs> plan that we have in store for them. Um, so do you want to, do you want a consensus from us tonight? Is that what you're looking for? Or? Well, I've heard from a few aldermen. Okay. So if you have some thoughts about what I just said. I would just say personally, my, my, would be the 10th. 10th? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can make the 10th work. Yeah. Okay. Because that fourth day was a Friday, wasn't it? It is. Yeah. It's actually my birthday, too. So. What better way to celebrate? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Not that I'm doing yeah. anything yeah. special that day. Did you say it was the 4th, the 10th, or the 11th? Oh. The 11th. This, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm just saying if CVB is, has the availability, and because this topic is Seemingly pretty interesting or polarizing. Maybe they could do it twice. It'd be nice if they did it. If they have the ability to do it twice, we've got the space. You mean twice that evening or two twice different days? Twice that. Maybe the fourth and the tenth, for example. If, you, if you're asking. If you're not asking, then I, then I wouldn't be an advocate. But if it's open, boy, there's a benefit to having it twice. I, um, so for the residents. If that's not in the agreement, yeah. that's an additional cost. I understand. So I thought I heard you say that. Um, so what, what they're looking for is just the selection of one date, but okay. two presentations in one evening. Oh, two so different times. That's, yeah, so that's what I would suggest. If we want an additional yeah. meeting, that's a cost because that's not in the contract. So like one afternoon and one evening or yeah. something? Yeah. Okay. Um, not at Tillis Park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, this is the biggest, this it, is bigger than every place. It could be here. So we need to find out. Hopefully, would you be agreeable? Yeah. You know, because it was at their city hall yeah. the first time, so it's our time to visit with. Yeah, it's, it's all of uh, two miles away. So, uh, all right. Thank you. Um, on to new business. Uh, item 10A is the police department fleet replacement policy addendum. As a way of background, um, ways and means recently relatively recently adopted a vehicle replacement policy to include either five years or 100,000 miles. 
on all vehicles and it applied to all vehicles. My understanding, and I'll turn it over to the chief here in just a second, is that they are asking for a number of reasons that that overall policy be amended as it pertains to the police vehicles. Thank you, Chief. You bet. I'm going to turn it over to Major McIntyre because he's uh, actually written this document and has been very closely monitoring our vehicle issues. Um, I'd just like to point out, and I know there's cars are expensive, I get it, but the police cars, in my opinion, are unique. Uh, our guys are in these cars 10 hours a day. It's their office, and by comparison, I think it's it's really important that they're mechanically sound so that they're safe. And uh, those are those are really the, the big concerns here when you start looking at our current fleet. So I'm going to turn this over to Jim. Switch seats with me so you can be tape recorded for prosperity. I, I have it on good authority that we're being listened to by our mayor, so he's texted me a couple of times here. So. Sure. Speak clearly, you know, and use small words because Dave's on the phone. <laughs> Understood. Right. So currently our, our fleet uh, consists of six marked vehicles, and um, the uh, newest one is 2016. <clears throat> Excuse me. The oldest uh, are the Tauruses, which are 2014s. Um, the Ford no longer makes the Taurus. That's just off the table. They make three. Uh, police vehicles, the, the, the uh, uh, Explorer, the Expedition, and the F-150, all in police packages. Uh, the 2016 that we have has 108,000 miles on it. It's had the rack and pinion replaced twice, uh, transmission replaced once. Um, the other SUV that we have is a 2015. It's got 103,000. It's currently at the garage. Uh, we do a weekly inspection on every vehicle. Uh, and it was noted that the tires needed to be replaced on this particular vehicle when they brought it down. Our mechanic said that uh, the car is not leaving the shop. It needed uh, extensive front end work, uh, suspension work. And that's what, uh, you know, that's unfortunately one of the byproducts of just driving in an you know, um, urban area. You know, it, it, uh, they tend, that's a part that tends to wear out quickly. Um, as I said, so, so at this point, we have uh, generally four to five officers on the street. We have five police cars in service right now, five marked cars in service. So we have uh, taken delivery of the 2020, one 2020. Uh, we're waiting for uh, the upfitting parts to get in so that we can put this car on the street. Um, when we replace the cars, um, based on what we have currently, if, we're, uh, if we go the five years, 100,000 miles, the problem is that the long before five years, uh, we're going to hit 100,000 miles. We're averaging about 25,000 miles a year in our police cars now. And um, the, what happens is we order them in June or in January, and it's a 90 to 100, 180 day turnaround. Um, well, I've been participating in the ordering of these since 2013. I haven't seen one in less than 180 days, not one car. Um, we still have not taken delivery of the two that we ordered and we're hoping to get them by the end of the year. It's just the uh, Ford has changed. <coughs> it's just a, it's a mess to, to try and describe, but uh, they changed the, the body style in the middle of the model year. Um, so what we're proposing here is when the vehicle hits 50,000 miles, that's when we need to start preparing to order. Um, so the vehicle hits, say it hits 50,000 miles in August, that vehicle should we should begin to replace that vehicle. In other words, we should order its replacement in January of that following year, because then in June of that year, then that vehicle, well, by July is when we have them on the street. By the time they, we get the upfitting, our upfitter to, to change them over, it's about July, which means that that 50,000 mile now vehicle has 75,000 miles on it. If we wait one more year, it's 100,000, and now we're really sinking a lot of money, and we're past the manufacturer's warranty on almost everything and that's a uh, once you start replacing the catalytic converters which are about twelve hundred dollars a piece you know the rack and pinions are about thirty two hundred a piece you know so it, we really start to rack up the, the cost and uh, as the chief alluded to these you know they're in these cars 10 hours a day you know so it, it, the whole vehicle begins to break down from inside to out so as i understand it um 
and math is not my strong suit. Otherwise, I'd be on ways and means and not on public safety. Um, but we have 14 vehicles, according to the memo. We have 14 vehicles, and you're talking about even though we have a 100,000-mile five-year policy. That was wrong. I'm sorry. I think I missed, told you that earlier. It's seven, seven um, years and 75,000. Seven for years. Seven years. The life cycle is seven years and 75,000 miles for a sedan. For a police SUV, it's five years and 65,000. And for a police car, it's four years and 50,000. So this is the current policy. So Okay. Yeah. If so, well, then that sure raises another that. question because I, I – you're going to hit mileage before you're going to hit three years at sixty-five thousand miles. You're going to hit. You're going to have. You're going to be replacing uh, um, uh, an SUV every two and a half years. Correct. Under under the notion that it gets twenty-five thousand miles on it a year, which I'm, I'm sure is right. I, I know you've been tracking that. Right. Um, so with this in mind, and this is the this is the manual now. Can, Isn't isn't this what we currently have more um, changing on vehicles faster than what you've proposed, which is three years or seventy five? What we're I think the what happens with our current policy is once it hits seventy five, then we can begin the process. What we'd oh, like I see to you're do saying because yeah. it takes so long. Correct, correct. So what we'd like to do is when the vehicle hits fifty thousand, that triggers. Okay, this vehicle is scheduled for replacement now. Whether it hits fifty thousand in March of that year or in December, that vehicle is going to be uh, slated for replacement. In other words, so in January we would order its replacement. And it's, and I remember hearing this from the chief previously, but I don't know if this is if this is still true or maybe I heard it wrong. But in every instance where you're replacing vehicles now. You're not replacing them with sedans. You're replacing them with SUVs. That's correct. It'll all be SUVs because the, the cost is relatively similar. Right, and then the uh, Ford does no no longer makes the right. The and and for safety issues and right. it's a bigger, it's a bigger it's vehicle. A, yeah. It's a little more it sturdy. Is more robust. I think. Yeah, yeah. Robust. That's a better word. And um, so what you're really asking for f from us is is an amendment to the to the vehicle policy as it's currently adopted. To say that at 50,000 miles, you be given the okay to begin the process of, of asking for a new vehicle on any vehicle that's attained 50,000 miles. Correct. On the, the, on the with, patrol fleet, that's correct. Right, with the idea that by the time you get around to ch swapping out those vehicles, 15,000 miles at least is going to pass by. Correct. And a number of days or weeks are going to pass by as well. Okay, so now I understand what you're asking for. I'll open it up to questions for the committee. Go ahead. Chief, when is that 50,000 mark or the 75 when you start really seeing the decline and in the increase in maintenance costs? 50,000. At that 50, mm -hmm. okay, so there would be a lot of savings in maintenance. Correct. And then a lot of things that we see is it staying with this new mileage, would a lot of those repairs then fall under the manufacturer's warranties? Right. For example, the city of Maplewood, they, they don't hold them longer than 36,000 miles. Because it's all warranty. Everything goes down to the dealer, and then they get a they trade them in. They get a higher value when they trade them in. Okay. The other consideration that Jim's point is, is you know, if these SUVs with seventy five thousand miles on, you're going to get something for it on a trade in because sure. we're not getting anything on ones that we have with a hundred miles. Mean, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong. I think our entire market fleet would be replaced immediately on a new policy. And I think that's part of the issue here is really the top of the policy. I think that's probably the biggest issue is things are expensive but these are important and it's if we get the policy where it's we have that year's almost a year buffer we're worried about getting the car to order in january this year so right. that we get them I mean, yeah the ones that we've already approved yes sir and they're ordered so so to your point with regard to the fact that the entire fleet exceeds the mm -hmm. mileage or the majority of the fleet exceeds the mileage you just start to pick and choose and say these two go next and these two go next and okay and then um, you, you just talked about the delay in getting the thing on the street or before we even accept delivery receive delivery and then is there a length of time to get it outfitted for there is the the outlier here is the fact that Ford changed the buy style in the middle of the year what happened is then all the upfitters we couldn't the manufacturers for the upfitter parts couldn't even get the parts. They couldn't even make their molds until July. Okay. 
So uh, today I just ordered the, the parts for the new, uh, you know, the, the center councils and that sort of thing, the prisoner partitions today. Generally speaking, it's two weeks. We get the car in, we notify our installer, two weeks later he's got it ready to go. I've reached out to them. Uh, Richmond Heights, they have a schedule. Um, they replace theirs, uh, I think it's 75,000 on theirs when they, they don't go over 75. Now, their mall cars, they'll leave one or two that, that are high mileage, but they just park them at the mall so that those aren't necessarily in their fleet per se. On the very high patrol in the Salem County Police for 60,000, so they do a replacement. And 75 for the SUV. I don't have a huge problem with the proposal, but I do know that there is a public perception issue on this topic, actually with our city for a while, um, and it's probably better now than it was, but there was a segment of time where we were criticized for having more newer vehicles in all of the city fleets, not just police, but also uh, the vehicles for the employees and so forth, sitting on our lot such newer vehicles all the time. Why don't we let them run, use the vehicles for a long period of time? To that end, to the extent that we have a list of the other municipalities and we have a comparable proposal for what's already being done, that makes it a whole lot easier. Um, the other question that I have had recently from one resident was, we used to have Dodge Chargers. And they said, why aren't we going, why are we going exclusively to the Explorer SUV? And I didn't have the answer. Um. Number one reason is safety. Number two reason is the sedans take, do not take the city's daily driving as well as a very strong SUV does. Uh, and specifically to the Dodge Charger, there was a lot of maintenance issues with the engine in that car. Uh, there was an oil sending issue with the engine and we didn't know how many we replaced before uh, I got here, but there were several. We replaced eight short blocks. Uh, Chrysler, um, we negotiated with Chrysler in 2009 and uh, all we had to pay was 500 per engine, and they replaced every engine we had. Hmm. There's a serious issue. The doors were falling off. Dave James would tell you that he had a stack of falling off. literally. Jesus. We had to have them rewelded. Uh, okay. the, Dave James had a stack of radiators uh, down at the garage. Uh, the Dodge product that they put out. The interior of these cars doesn't hold up either. Although, if, if you look right now, if you looked at the Ford cars model, there's holes. In the room, literally, the floors. In the Floorboard holes, the steering wheels are breaking apart. The, the the seats are ripped. They don't hold up to cops getting in and out with guns and rubbing on them. And the sedan model just are it is what it is. They're in these cars a lot, and they get abused. And the bigger and stronger the truck is, the more it holds up to that abuse. The Charger is not that much cheaper than an Explorer, or is it? it anyway. the, they're relatively the same. The, okay. the Charger and the Explorer, they're within a few thousand dollars of each other. Okay. But the city should be able to get comparator information, or 14, 13 comparators. Is yeah. it, can you get yeah. that in place? Mm -hmm. All of the cars we buy come off of a, a grant process to the state. So we get a reduced cost for the, for the state of Missouri. We get to go through a certain vendor who appears. And so the, the cost we're paying for the Explorer, yeah, it's reasonable considering what you're getting. Do we have any chargers still in the we have two. Uh, they're unmarked detective cars. Two survivors. Right. Okay. So they don't. They don't. They don't. Uh, they're not in the patrol fleet. So they're only driven Monday through Friday. Got it. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, that, yeah, that raises yeah. another question. Then, then the cars we're just talking about are just the ones that are out cruising the neighborhood. That's correct. So we're talking a total of four. Or? Well, we have six current vehicles in the fleet right now. So, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean no, to. No, that's yeah. that was, that so, my question. So, please. Um, to Alderman Kramer's statement about the vehicle replacement policy, I was on the Ways and Means Committee at the time when we did that, and I don't have any recollection of having that analysis be at all specific to the police. Uh, I mean, I thought that was more to civil servant cars. <laughs> yeah, it was, but, you know, and when I'm hearing from you, is it you, what you really, 
this change is, is more or less consistent with our prior policy, except that you need more runway in order to right. land into the, the, I think, the replacement period that was contemplated by that. That's exactly policy. correct. So, but I don't recall at all that the that anyone was saying, you know, oh, look at those police with those brand new cars. In fact, I don't think that when I see your cars. Um, so. Um, so I wanted to make sure I got this correctly. So the addendum part of this that you're seeking from us and then from the full board is an addendum that would, instead of waiting to 65,000 miles to begin the process of changing out the vehicle, we would begin that, you'd be given the go-ahead to begin that process at 50,000 miles, regardless of the age of the vehicle. That's correct. That's really what it, what it, what it asks for all of them is the police cars be considered differently than the rest of the fleet. Right. Sure, I understand That's that. How I want it no, I understand that, but I'm just saying as, as it pertains to what we're gonna present first as a motion tonight and then as a motion to the full board would be an addendum to the existing police or the existing uh, vehicle replacement policy to pertain just to the vehicles in patrol in the police department and it would say that um, at 50,000 miles regardless of the age of the vehicle uh, the police department is authorized to go ahead and begin the process of replacing that vehicle placing the order and then going through the process we go through to you know the budgetary process that goes through on all of that right that's is correct. that is that pretty accurate yeah, okay I'd entertain a motion to that effect at this point uh, so moved thank you second second it's been moved and seconded is there any further discussion so essentially what what was in that which the yellow uh, mine isn't yellow because I don't have a colored cartridge but uh, so that would be the amendment to the policy or yeah. Right. Yes. Is there yes. no need for this to go to Ways and Means since this was part of the financial policies and procedures document that was a the only thing I can think of Ways and Means to the board? The only thing I can think of is to allow Ways and Means an opportunity to say what you've already said, and that is whether you contemplated this when you were doing it as a full across the board thing or whether, like you had already indicated, this seems perfectly reasonable that we're not applying the same exact policy to the rest of our fleet as we are to our I mean we have a ways and means committee meeting it's before. on the agenda and it's, you know? this is on so the agenda I She's would just asking assume keep you know keep I keep it as is. yeah keep it as is I don't want to okay. speak for the committee alone well I mean I'd, I'd go along with that yeah. that's your thought you have any thoughts about that is that no? okay all right uh, no for no further discussion I would uh, call for a vote Yes. Alderman no. Alderman yes. Alderman yes. Thank you. And we will uh, submit this uh, to the full board of aldermen for consideration at, I guess, the next meeting. Would that be the next meeting? Um, yeah, it could be. Oh, so depending on what happens. Okay, yeah. very good. All right. Thank you. Thanks for that presentation. Yes, sir. Chief. Uh, moving on to the police department canine program. Um, Spoken about a little bit earlier, uh, kind of self-explanatory. I'll ask the chief to kind of bring us up to speed on where we're at. So we have, uh, for about the last year, we've contemplated and talked with the city administrator about the value of a, of a police dog program for the city of Brentwood. Uh, I'm going to have Major Hawkins come up and, and kind of explain it at, at length and answer your questions if you have them. Um, frankly, the big concern here is the cost. Um, this, the canine program is going to require a vehicle, which we just talked about the cost of these cars. So, um, but Angie's going to come up and talk about what the value, specific value, would be for us in terms of how it services the community and its value from a public relations standpoint, and then as a policing standpoint in terms of, of what a dog actually does and what the different kinds of dogs are and the kind that we're targeting to, to get it. We would do. Okay. Thanks, Major. Major, welcome. Nice to be back in St. Louis. Never thought I'd say that. Here we are. All right. Um, thank you for having me. I just want to talk really briefly uh, to a few points that Alderman O'Neill brought up uh, when she addressed the committee. Uh, the first thing is, uh, I think she made a comment about, you know, you hear police dog and you think maybe German Shepherd or Malinois or bite dog and apprehension dog. That's not what we're looking for. Um, there's a lot of liability tied up in those dogs, and there's a lot of risk associated with those dogs and the value that can be brought to the city and the community and the 
police department for that matter from a p r perspective alone from a lab or a hound style dog is incredible she touched on a lot of that stuff already the goal would be to have a dual trained dog so it would be tracking and detection tracking to me is the more important of the two because you can find humans with a tracking track i'm sorry tracking dog and we have a little girl in town who's a nine-year-old autistic girl and she's gotten out of her own window twice uh, in, in recent months it's a perfect example of when we could use a canine to come out and and do a search with us. Again, Alderman O'Neill talked about the car break-ins. A lot of times we get calls in the middle of the night for people roaming around on foot. Great use for the dog, great use for the dog. Um, additionally, it can be trained to search for or to detect narcotics. Um, I have talked very, very briefly with the, uh, with the school board about that. There was a point where they had canines come through uh, to do d drug sniffs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, whether or not they want to go with that is is completely up to them. Again, it wouldn't be a, a German shepherd walking around the school scaring the children. Rather, it would be an opportunity, whether or not they used it for drug detection, an opportunity for the canine to go into the high school, the private schools, the elementary and middle schools, and build those connections with the kids. Um, it would be invaluable in that regard, not just with the children, but with with any of our, our citizens whatsoever. Uh, someone brought up, Kathy brought up, you know, talking about you know, involving the community in this dog project. One of the ways to do so is having a contest really involving the community. Hey, who wants to name the Brentwood PD canine? Um, and getting something cute like that going on with it. So um, essentially, the chief already hit on it. The biggest token here would be the vehicle for it. There are some um, additional upfront costs that are one-time costs in terms of a kennel for the officer to have at his home. Uh, those are much lower costs um, compared to the compared to the vehicle itself. So, what kind of questions do you have? I, I have a couple, and then I'll turn it over to the rest of the committee. Sure. The canine and training uh, expense that's been listed here is fourteen thousand dollars. Is that a one-time training, or do, do dogs like? like lawyers and doctors and other have continuing education at times? That or? particular cost is A, a little bit inflated. Okay. Uh, B, it is a one-time cost. Okay. Essentially what how they train these dogs is they will train them and then they will say, hey, come down to our training location. We'll match you up with a dog who you gel with and then that officer will train with the dog for anywhere from four to six weeks and then we bring it back here for us. But after that, annual retraining is actually free in St. Louis through St. Charles County. Kirkwood puts some on, and um, basically they have the people who do the certification come to those locations, and they'll run you through it. So you, you list thirty-two thousand um, dollars for the uh, the vehicle, and uh, I'm assuming some sort of a a way to uh, separate the where the dog would be from the front seat of the vehicle. Sure. Um, is there no, can we take a vehicle that we have now and convert it with that? Or is that is that the cost of doing that no matter what we're doing? Are we talking about a new this vehicle? Is, this, is, this is in theory dedicated a for brand this. new vehicle. If we were to take a, an older vehicle and outfit it, if we were to buy a used vehicle and outfit that, that would be different. The outfitting itself for the car is about 4,700. Okay. You have the partition, you have the specific air conditioner, a heat alarm, door locks, um, but that's a brand new car. And then so, um, would this be the kind of vehicle that would be quote unquote in patrol or would this be the kind of vehicle that would be get use more like a detective's vehicle? This would be more of a patrol vehicle. Okay. This would be a, a simultaneous assignment for the officer in mind. So this would be a vehicle that would be expected to hit that 25,000 miles a year or no? That's correct. Oh really? Well, but keep in mind though, it's gonna be driven by one police. Okay. So it's when he's on duty. Okay. Now they carry the cars in the, in the door, out the door, and then hand the keys to each other. That won't be the case with this car. Okay, so it's so the mileage may be slightly less. Slightly less. Well, it'll be this, I, I don't know. I mean, four days a week. You know, I mean, he will work a twelve-hour shift. Sure. And be uh, in the platoon and, and ride the street. But one the of the cars. six patrol cars are going to be out five days a week, at least six days a week, right? right. If not so I, I guess maybe half of mileage. Maybe. Okay. All right. Questions? How would it work with? It's one dog but we've got two shifts. So what shift is this dog 
in with the dog. The shift, uh, the dog would stay with its handler on whatever shift the handler's on. The handler would be on an on-call on basis, okay. similar to our detectives. Okay. So in addition to the shift that they'd be working, patrolling, as you say, that dual function, they also would be on call at other times to... If there was, if there was something that they needed the canine for, sure, or a track okay. or something. Would this dog be used for walking around the car sniffing for drugs on a pullover if you pulled the car over? If, the, if an officer requested that, there would already need to be some stuff in place, obviously, to justify that, but potentially so. More so if the, um, if we're talking about call outs, that'd be more if the officer was already on duty or if it was a day watch shift. I can't see the reasonableness of calling a canine officer in the middle of the night to come and do a sniff. I don't know. We haven't talked about that specifically, but that's my personal opinion. But it'd be made available to the school, like you say, if the school wanted it? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to point. I didn't know if you had a question or not. Can an existing vehicle be retrofitted that can otherwise be used for patrol on different shifts? Or does it have to be a dedicated vehicle only for that purpose? It'll have to be dedicated only for that purpose. Just because of the way the partition is, it's made specifically for a canine. has venting that goes in and out so that the dog doesn't get too hot, too cold. So that, that costs all under the $4,700 includes like a heat detection alarm and, and a clicker to open the door, things like that. Those are standard in a, a canine vehicle, so that car would stay with the handler. We could use a used car to do that, but the risk you take is that you're going to dump $4,700 on a, a used car. And then do it all again. And then the car, yeah, and we, we tried to determine, can you then take the equipment and put it into a different vehicle? And it doesn't appear you can. It's not necessarily some of it is but it's not necessarily interchangeable to a new car but can you use the car that's been that if that's the case can you use the car that's been outfitted for regular patrolling when the dog's not there or is it only for the with the dog it would be only with the dog because if the dog got the if the dog and the handler got called out then that car would have to be returned to the handler's home and you'd lose a lot of time there in between Plus that, that handler, there's other, other responsibilities with this dog that that car is needed for. Going to the vet, for example, uh, they train frequently. Eureka does a ton of training for its canines. So, you know, depending on who the officer is, that they will be using the, the car for those. There is no canine program that I know nationally that doesn't have a, a car assigned for the officer because of that reason. They, they, the car, the dog, and the officer all stay together. Um, so I had a couple of questions. Uh, going back to our, our age-old question about comparator cities, do, are there any other communities within our 14 that we compare with regard to salary that have any kind of a, a canine presence in their patrol force? It's a phenomenal question. Um, not ones that have dogs that are specific to um, tracking and detection alone. I think the nearest one would probably be St. Charles County. Okay. Kirkwood has a program. They're the only one out of our comparators that does. Okay. And theirs, I believe, is a, an apprehension case. Yeah, I don't know what kind of dog. And that's Webster the, has one, too. They who does Webster? Apprehension. Yeah. Yeah. And that, oh, I'm sorry. What does that mean? Does that mean, like, unhook the leash and oh, like, go get them? Like, it's, it's a bite that, dog. We okay. call it in the, in the like. business, we call it a bite dog, um, which is not what we're looking for. A uh, bite dog is, you know, you're, you're tracking suspects, and you are going, that you think that they're going to be adversarial yeah. in some way, and then you train the dog to bite. Not at all the case with what we're looking to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if I think of car clotting, I mean, how often has it come up where it seems to me if you see someone who's trying to steal a car and get in a car and speed off, you'd have probable cause to pull them over. But how often have you been in the woods chasing after someone wishing that you had a dog that could help track you? The woods very infrequently here in Brentwood, but <laughs> or, or, you know, on foot. Yeah. Like, where you know, these woods like, you speak of? Yeah, this, yeah, we're in this trail, trail, this hunting. Sure, you know, I'm sure. thinking of my uncle who goes pheasant hunting. Like sure, dogs, not that situation. Would... So actually, more frequently, what uh, our officers will come across is a vehicle that maybe the dome lights on, or some other indicator that it's been recently gone through. That would be a great, great path for the dog to start to track and see. Hey, where did they lead to? Did they go through yards? Were they going to other cars? Et cetera, et cetera. So is there like a scent they pick up, or it's not as because you could you could rummage through that car, I guess yeah. presumably by that sure. point. A lot of times so, too, what happens is um, you and correct me if I'm going off base here. What they'll do is they'll they'll train the dog to the handle, the door handle, and then that picks up the scent of whoever touched it last, and then they'll kind of go from there. And a lot of times too, some debris from the vehicle, whether it's trash or personal items, will be left on the street, and they'll pick up a scent from that. 
So, but we don't, we don't chase these people out of Brentwood now. I mean, so are you going to take the dog right. to St. Louis? I mean, I guess I'm not understanding like how, I think of, I think of, you know, I took a crim pro and it's like my second year of law school. And so what I know about dogs, you know, fit in a teacup, but I think of it as like drugs, bombs and bodies, like, you know, that you, you know, there's heroin in that sunroof and you don't, you can't search it. And so you go and you sure. know, get your drug dog to look sure. at it. I mean, that's, but I, so I guess I'm not understanding how our needs are addressed. Very specifically to dog. that, it'd be more of an investigative tool. I mean, would a dog be able, so if we have a shoplifter who puts in, you know, is stealing a scarf and some other, I mean, how would it, how would a dog be able to sniff that out? I mean, I, so you show up on a scene like that and the loss prevention person says, hey, he ran that way. You put the dog on the trail and the dog can sniff that person out. Which not way they ran. Car or car, Metrolink, whatever the case is. What do we do now? You know, as far as, you know, do, is that the same as county? I mean, I see the dog at the courthouse every day. I do not pet them. They say not to. Right. But, um, right. I mean, what, you know, if you have a need for a dog, what do you, what do you do? We would probably call the, the city house trooper and say, I come in for a car clotters. Um, they're, they're probably not going to be available for us. And I would throw you a number. Oh, one. I would tell you this year there were 20 cases where guys were on foot, specifically at night, doing car clotting. Not necessarily all in Brentwood, but certainly very close to us. So this dog would get a workout at night at the top of, uh, of kids on, on foot in areas doing car clotting. Uh, you, know, you, you say that the criminal piece, yeah, if the guys aren't from Peter Burks, they, they can track that. But we also get called in the line, folks, nowadays, as we get you know, Alzheimer's patients that'll walk away from the house with the little kid that Angie mentioned. So there are other cases other than just criminal acts that are brought to the as well to track these people. But, uh, you know, the drug piece is car stops and school searches. Uh, but really, frankly, the, the best value, in my opinion, out of this dog is a PR kid. We can walk into our retail, uh, walk into our schools, get the tickets to areas that parks we got officers you know that this canine officer can walk a park with it uh, and you, for me this is my estimation of, of, a, of a dog like this for a city like Brentwood I put PR as number one reason second would be car uh, hunting our car clotting guys get the car on foot and then following that up with drug searches and something between elderly and autistic kids that run away or walk away uh, so those are kind of the values but uh, you know, your, your perception and I think Alder Roman O'Neill hit on the perception of having a canine with police officers in this day and age is at very high value. Is there any way we could just get an APA dog and have hey, you walk hey, around? That's this <laughs> idea. <laughs> I guess in all the years I've been on public safety, Amways and Means, I've never once heard you guys come and ask, hey, we, you know, we need, we need $42,000 this year to get a dog. It I never mean, came to the committee. It's so, just come up different times. Yeah, yeah. but priorities Remember. come to the committees. Well, I mean, that's the. I mean, I, if we're if we're having to allocate scarce resources and we can't do everything, we you can. know, I. It's not that I don't like dogs. You know, I just it's there's this. The city used to and maybe Major McIntyre can speak to it if you have knowledge. The city used to have a dog, I'm, I'm told, yeah. and and so why don't you share that with the committee? Well. So, yeah, so the city had, uh, we've had three dogs, um, Officer Barney Schultz, uh, he retired five years ago, uh, had a dog, he was a handler, Officer Eisenbeis uh, was our other handler, and then uh, uh, the late Officer Mike Johnson was uh, one of our canine handlers. Um, so we used that dog, uh, primarily uh, here in Brentwood, we used it for uh, tracking. Uh, oftentimes, uh, there were, we had several cases where it was either a, a person with dementia, Alzheimer's, that uh, had come to Brentwood or had lived in Brentwood and was lost. We used that dog a lot for tracking uh, with some pretty good success. Um, we had, uh, now these were all bike dogs, they were all German Shepherds, um, but uh, the, the difference in the two is, you know, it was night and day. I mean, it, it, just looking at the Shepherd, it, yeah. it gives a, a vibe of something that, you know, that's a little different. But the but the labs and the dogs that they use for this, it's a completely different. It's a whole different mindset and, and, and picture. Um, but we had some significant success. 
I think one of the times we used the old uh, uh, fire chief Niemeyer's car, I think we used uh, Bratcher's actually. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, assistant fire chief Bratcher's car, and we outfitted that with the with the uh, with the cage in it. But it it was specifically Craig's car. I mean, he he drove that car home, and he put the dog in it. Took the dog to the vet, and uh, and for all his training. So it was, uh, you know, vehicle specific. So let's, and let's, um, let's, as I understand the application or the, the summary here, you're looking at least initially here to try to do this without any additional cost, at least not initially. I mean, the, the memo I read says no cost to the city is anticipated. If we cannot find donors, we will advise the city administrator and the board to seek direction. So this is sort of like, you know, what do you think about this as an idea? We're going to try to figure out a way to fund it. And if we can figure out a way, we're gonna. We'd like your permission to go ahead. If we can't, we'll come back to you with a more specific. Is that? Am I reading that correctly? Or? Yeah, we had that conversation about funding it, um, and, and I don't know where we where we go. And my concern with doing that is we might end up with eight thousand dollars in a pool of money, right? Nowhere near the cost that we need. Right. What we got to do with that eight thousand dollars? Give it back to people. I don't know what we could do with it. Right. I understand. We could. I mean, it, that's an option. We could have Karen Shaw open an account. We could go fund the stage. We, we could go to car dealerships and pull guns on them and see if we can get a car. We could do a lot of things. Uh, kidding. Uh, I have just one more yeah. question. So, if we got this dog, do we then punt to the school board about philosophically the, the Fourth Amendment, whatever it comes to? You know, I don't care if it's a Labrador or a Doberman or a pit bull or a poodle. If that dog plants itself in front of your locker <laughs> smelling <laughs> the drugs inside that kid's gonna be anxious but so they, do they implement that i don't we, we don't have to do that right no, that's, <laughs> that's, that's them okay that's, that's, that's their yeah, right. that's fine <laughs> then, then i'll punt to that that was i mean okay it really further would, than that. come down to is we just walk the dog through the school and say hi to kids that you know it depends on what dr lane wants to do with the school board but yeah they'd have to have a policy it's not question. a cost i just i was going to comment that i i really am in favor of the public relations aspect of this and, the, and as you talked about the, the numerous possibilities that it can be a benefit um, I, I'm wishing and hoping that and, and perhaps it's just flat out no that there's a way to do a multi-purpose vehicle that, that, that can also be used for patrolling and not, it's not just sitting there the other days that it's not being used for, for the, the dog use. There's a way to cut into some of the initial costs? Yeah. Um, and maybe that maybe there's a donation aspect to it that's going to help out in the end. Um, um, and my the the topic of can it be used on the platform for MetroLink? I don't know if that's something that's possible or not. And can they chase? Can it chase the car clouders? Can it bite them? Can it stop them? Can it pull them down? Can it? That's the difference between an what they call an apprehension dog and okay. a tracking dog. Okay. Uh, a tracking dog rely on the officer to actually do the apprehension piece. Uh, when I was in the city police department, I actually commanded the canine unit. They were apprehension oh. dogs. <coughs> the handler would physically unleash the dog, and it would track and attack if it needed to. <coughs> that's the difference. So you just wait for the barking, and just that's where you, okay. Okay. Purling, wrestling, blood. <coughs> just kidding. We're not, we're not interested in that type of aggressive dog. Mr. Chairman, if there's a way to do a motion that doesn't involve purchasing of a new police car, I'd be in favor of that motion. Yeah, I, I'm not big on the cost of this, just for, <coughs> just for a PR standpoint. I mean, I'd, I'd rather have the bite dog so you guys don't have to apprehend a guy. I mean, protects you and you let the dog take down. I'd rather have that than just something walk around the schools and let the kids can pet for $46,000. The concern is the collateral damage on the bites, the lawsuits that come afterwards, and the optics of the bites sometimes are not good. But that's to, a concern. to the alderman's point, though, both both uh, Tom and, and Steve's, um, is, is there is there a way to ease into this process um, to to you know begin the pro because there's going to be there's going to be a, a time period where the dog is chosen trained and delivered, right? I mean, and that doesn't happen all in, I mean, I imagine that happens in a period of months. That'd be several months. Um, 
even if we had started it today. Sure. Um, is there a way that, because I could see, like to, to your point, Chief, I could see a any kind of a fundraising effort, and I, I like, and, and Alderman, Alderman O'Neill's point about the um, getting school kids involved, I think that's a wonderful idea. And, and I think that a $14,000 price tag is far more attainable than $55,000 uh, for something like this, unless you found somebody who's really wanting this to happen and just says, hey, I'll pay for this, you know. Um, I, so in theory, if we were to come and say, hey, we had someone donate a car for us. And a dog. <laughs> yeah, well, what a cost. I mean, what is a dog cost? Is that part of the 14? People yes, that that's stuff. dog and the training. training. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's training for the dog and the handler. Right. And then the dog itself. There's, there's one more option here in terms of paying for this potentially. And that, that outside, of, first of all, the property money would probably be an appropriate expense yeah. here. Um, and so the property is something to do, obviously. The other piece is, is if we required that you authorize us to buy what we just bought, it came out of our asset forfeiture funding. That can only be spent on law enforcement related stuff and we may in 2020, we think we're gonna get some more money into that fund. We have no idea how much. Uh -huh. <laughs> I knew it. It, it revolves around a boat being sold, a plane being sold, and some other things. That, stuff that was forfeited. Yeah, well we were part of the DEA task force. Right. We don't know what the dollars are gonna be on that. Security, and I don't know what this looks like, but I'm just put it to you and, and say, I, I think we could maybe piecemeal this if we used a chunk of money from property, and I'll throw you a number, $10,000 dedicated to this canine program. And we, we use whatever asset forfeiture money. If the board authorized us to, as a department to, to create a GoFundMe thing, we can use right. that money. We seriously, I think we can either, and Jim can find a used police car that might be you know, something we could buy at much less cost. Or we could truly go after our car dealerships that are very supportive of law enforcement typically, and we might be able to, to figure out a car. But we need some direction from the board on all that in terms of how you would be, how it, so what with, it looks like. So with that in mind, is there, a, go ahead, I'm sorry. I could make a, I mean, the recommendation for the motion right. is a motion to explore the development of a police canine position for the city of Brentwood. Right. And if that also said, without funding from the city of Brentwood budget. Yeah, you're making that motion? Yes. Okay, is there a second to that motion? That motion is. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? The motion on the table, as I understand it, is to give the police department direction to say that we are in favor of the idea of exploring this, figuring out what it potentially will cost, figuring out ways that it might be fundraised, um, and uh, not authorizing any money at this point, but authorizing the idea of the addition of a canine patrol. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I ask for a roll call. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, item 11A, are there any additional or any citizen comments? Anybody in the audience who wishes to address this board on any public, any public safety topic can do so. You'll be given three minutes at least. Hearing no additional comments or anybody interested in making additional comments, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So, second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.